and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode, Comic Conspiracy podcast, I suppose, episode 480. Uh, uh, this is for the week of Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020. My name is Ryan Higgins and, oh boy, it's, it's the year's almost over. I'm so tired. I can't do this shit on Tuesdays anymore. It's so long. Tuesday is the worst day. Why do we podcast on Tuesday? We changed it to Tuesdays because it was just the logical thing. Whose idea was this? It's terrible. We should do it Mondays. That's still really bad, though. But yeah, not as bad, bad as Tuesdays. Tuesdays is a horrible day to do, to do a podcast. No, what it's okay thinking? to do the podcast when we just do it right after you, after work closes and we're done. We sit oh, down. That's bad too. No, that's it's bad not. too. You're just you're just this whole year has oh. given you this whole. I can just do everything remotely. I don't even need to be there. I I can't do everything remotely. That's not the problem. The problem is that, like, I, Tuesday is, like, my longest fucking day, and then I tack a podcast on top of it. Like, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Well, we'll have to reconsider this next year. We have to move dates. I don't know. I can't do this on Tuesdays anymore. This shit's ridiculous. Anyway, my name is Ryan Higgins. Who's here with me this week? A young Brock Sager. <laughs> young? <laughs> and from the wild, wild west. Um, Kevin Sharp. Just don't even know why I bother. That'd be Toby. Toby, what are you playing? Sunset Riders. Yeah, you told me about this. Yeah, I, I've never played this. I know what it is, but I've never played it. I looked it up. Plenty of things wrong with your video game history, especially a lack of Konami games. That's true. I was never a huge Konami fan. So I'm sorry if my chair is my my chair feels extra squeaky too. Can you hear that? Like, uh, Dude, that Konami, t- Konami during the Super Nintendo, Nintendo time was like gold. Like even even when I'm even like my uh, I got my thing from Nintendo this year and it's like here's all the Nintendo stuff you played and it was like you're a Nintendo fan you play Nintendo games a Nintendo loyalist through and through <laughs> so yeah they know they know I'm a Nintendo fan uh uh there's a Brody on the screen go to bed yeah go to bed little kid yeah little kid go to bed make sure that door Pokemon shut Pokemon cards out of here. Um. Anyway, are we even doing a podcast? Because like we're <laughs> rambling. Are you didn't record like a Ryan bitch session. <laughs> it's, it's the end of 2020, right? It's just yeah, like, bitch anymore, man. I'm just, I'm listen, just I, nice for the for the listeners to like listen in every week. You're just like, uh, I don't want to do this anymore. I got change. No, it's, it's bad thing. today. It's bad because I'm really tired. I've been I've been fighting some stupid like sinus infection yeah, like since the beginning of the year or beginning of the year. Jesus Christ, the beginning of the month. Like it's been kicking my ass. We're actually going back the doctor again tomorrow for a follow-up um yeah i just i'm just tired i'm just tired it's a long long year tuesdays are long like people don't realize like i mean it's basically the you know in the, on the back end uh it is our busiest day we're processing the entire shipment i'm you know up at like yeah. you know 6 37 in the morning driving down to fedex a little bit later getting the shipment unboxing everything all day getting everything filed and we have significantly more customers than we had you know a couple just a couple years ago so it's suddenly become a much bigger project, and yeah, Tuesday nights are tough, man, for the podcast. I don't want to. I don't feel like I'm like out of it when we're doing this, but uh, yeah, it's hard. I'm staring at the screen, and I'm like, oh, I should be in bed right now. Uh, anyway, we don't have a ton of news, but we do have some big news. Uh, but we're gonna go over the DC solicitations for March 2021 because, contrary to popular belief, um, you know. Uh, Rob Liefeld and uh, Ethan Van Skyver called it and said the DC Comics was going to be out of business. Uh, but unfortunately, for the first time ever, they were wrong about something. And uh, lo and behold, somehow DC Comics is still going to be publishing comics as of March 2021. Can you can you just sense the 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 dripping sarcasm coming out of my my mouth right now? It's I clearly I I Oh I thought I'm, it was just I'm sinus shocked. drip. I thought it was just sinus drip. It's just I I'm shocked that this <laughs> multi billion dollar company will continue to be successful into the next year after a despite a pandemic, a near record year for the company. But uh, you know a dude on YouTube said they're going out of business like, oh, because oh, 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 a angry, bitter guy on YouTube. 
they they got they got woke so they must have gone broke because that's what our thing is we tell people despite uh-huh. the contrary is always correct anyway dc comics the publishing the start of a podcast of all it's time. fine it's fine i just like, i just i just then he talks about downer stuff then he talks about dumbasses i'm trying to i'm trying to i'm trying to just be I'm as, be as, funny. It's as not sarcastic working. as i possibly can here because dc comics march 2021 baby all sorts of big new comics from hit comic creators and fan favorites and new creators and new old characters you love coming at you 2021 want to hear all about it we're going to tell you right now infinite frontier number zero um this is basically the the rebirth book all right uh i think maybe they their rebirth might be too not that's a big bar let's let's not let's not call it rebirth uh it's it's uh this is marvel this is dc now no that might uh, be too uh, low you're gonna jinx it Um, you're gonna jinx it how about somewhere in between dc rebirth now we'll call it that yeah. uh this is their uh their special uh that's gonna have um a whole bunch of 64 pages uh anthology which dc has a lot of anthologies coming up you're gonna hear all about those uh it has stories by joshua williamson scott snyder james tiny in the fourth uh brian michael bendis becky cluden jeff johns joshua williamson james tiny in the fourth and philip kennedy johnson as well as art by john timms david marquez uh michael conrad uh with um uh attila martinez attila uh, uh, uh sorry alitha alitha martinez todd knock alex maliv uh jorge jimenez and jamal ingle so this is going to cover uh a bunch of the upcoming story arcs that will uh, be starting as of March. Now that um, now that um, um, future state is over, some of these will include future state characters who have obviously they're now coming into the standard DC universe. Uh, but of course, a lot of them are just going to be their regular characters. The I believe the only one in here that isn't actually like directly connected to the ongoing comic that starts in March is um. Uh, the Jeff Johns Star Girl short, so that could be a tease for an upcoming Star Girl miniseries. I, of course, would love a JSA comic by Jeff Johns. That would be incredible. You already got one. Another one, an, uh, a current <laughs> one to go along with the second season of the Star Girl uh, comic or the Star Girl TV show, which the JSA will be a major role. Uh, there's a there's a few. Um, Characters on the the uh, front cover here. Uh, it's by Dan Jurgens and Mikhail Hanin. Uh, characters that we haven't really seen too much in the DC universe recently. Uh, they do have um, Jade, uh, so uh, and Alan Scott are here as well as um, uh, Ooh uh, Obsidian. Sorry, Obsidian, uh, his son. Uh, we have the Flash from Future State. We have uh, Damien in his new not Robin costume, yes, as well as uh, Nubia, uh, Red X yeah. coming in from the, the Teen Titans. Uh, Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, Green Arrow, Black Canary. Good to see them them teaming up. Um, you know, a bunch of the traditional Titans, Aquaman's there. And uh, in... in uh, in the where it says Infinite Frontier number zero at the top, it says like a you know like a like like Wonder Woman's like in the stars, like her portrait sort of in the in the stars, and there's infinite Earths kind of around her. So the fate of Wonder Woman, I mean her book's still coming out, but the fate of Wonder Woman post metal is um, we'll see something big happening between metal and um, uh, future state with Wonder Woman. So uh, all these stories will will go into uh, just the upcoming books. So Batman, Wonder Woman, Justice League, oh. Titans. Looking forward <sighs> to that. Hello, dog. My dog is barking at me or barking at something. Uh, there'll also be a uh, Spectre and Wonder Woman in some like white garb variant cover. So we don't quite know what that's all about. Um, uh, Guess we'll find out when we read Infinite Frontier number zero in March, assuming DC hasn't gone out of business in February, like Rob Liefeld says they're going to. So we'll see what happens. 
We'll see what happens. Anything uh, catch your guys' eyes on this thing? I'm just, it's, I mean, Reaver special. I'll read it. See what the see what they're planning on doing. Like, a oh, while well, Charlie's mean, joined the podcast. Yes, yes, I, I stuck in here. There he is. Charlie's here. <laughs> what happened, huh? Charlie, how much of that did you hear? So I joined as you were comparing this to Marvel Now and all that stuff. Oh, okay. I wasn't looking at the the recording. Okay, so you heard you heard most of it. Yeah, this is going to be kind of like the wait, most picked up wait, book. Wait, wait, and Charlie. Okay, and let's go. Charlie. And Charlie. So I've been wondering for a while now what would happen if I joined Zencaster after recording is already in process. So apparently that works very smooth. Yeah, it just sucks in the back end. I just have to. It doesn't suck. I just I can't do the auto uh, correct thing. I have to manually, but it's fine. It it doesn't matter. It takes two seconds. Yeah, this coming from the guy that just spent the entire opening of the podcast going, "Uh, recording on a Tuesday. Why do I do this to myself?" Well, if Toby uploaded faster than you know the the half dead hamster spinning the wheel. Hey man, I, I, all my hamsters are, are in the union, all right? They need their breaks. They need their dinner breaks. I, there's nothing I can do about it. If you got, if you upgraded to that 56K BOD modem, then I think uh, I, I'd be able to actually uh, get this process a little faster. I'm telling you, man, the hamsters are a union, man. I, mean, I got to do the up, right thing. You know, move it up for 14.4. You know, you're hiring ununionized hamsters. That's your problem. Toby's mom picks up the call in the middle of him uploading. You have to redo the whole thing. <laughs> I was talking to some of Leanne's friends the other day. Do you guys remember buying screensavers? Do you remember buying like, yeah, like the flying toaster? Like nope. you have to like pay money for like boxed copy uh, screensavers. I, I do remember when they used to like sell the discs and stuff. I never actually purchased any screensavers that way. Good time. Oh wait, okay, I'm lying. I purchased a Red Dwarf screensaver I, that way. I was at about some point. to say. There is no chance you did not purchase like a Red Dwarf or Doctor Who screensaver like in like 1995. I, I guarantee you did. I know you. The did. really sad part is I'm not 100 percent sure I ever actually inserted the disc and installed it. <laughs> it's a collector's item now. I have been Infinite Frontier should be good. Um, this is going to be a big uh, launch, and you know, especially this kills the rumor of DC not publishing comics, uh, DC not having continuity between their comics because all of this spins out of current events some of this comes you know the joke the batman stuff is just a straight mm-hmm. true line for what james tinian was doing or tinian was doing on on batman uh the future state stuff is coming into into wonder woman uh as well as teen titans uh justice league uh again new creative team and we'll get to that a little bit later but brian michael bendez and david marquez which i'm fucking stoked for uh, yeah so you know uh, all the stories in the solicitation, a lot of them continue from pre new fifty or from pre um pre future state mm-hmm. some. Yeah. Uh, there's gonna be comics, there's gonna be for DC, they're publishing books. It is a little bit of a lower output. They they uh, they have said, yes, we have started uh kind of like they did in, in um in rebirth we're starting slightly lower. There's some backups, there's some anthologies, and they're just expanding over the course of the next, you know, number of months, getting back up to probably a, a usual slate of books which is what i always said was going to happen because this is what happens every time hey at least you're going to be able to actually (sighs) physically read this this time i should be in the store when this comes out yes 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 (laughs) i should be i should be no honeymoon's planned as far as i know um what is that little happening what is it what is it you already got your treat my old my old dog Yes, I know, I know. You already got a treat. Yeah, you already got it. Go away. I already gave you one. Ah, she wants another treat. Man, everything's distracting me in this podcast tonight. There you go. Ah, she wants another one. Um, Give it to her. Infinite Frontier should be fun. Now, I do want to go over the books. This is the books coming out. Okay, come here. Come here. Come here. Go away. Um, <laughs> Come here and go away. <laughs> well, I told her to go away, and she ran away, and I told her to run away, and then she stayed. So I don't know what the hell she wants. Uh, we have a ton of books that are coming out from DC uh, in March. We're going to go over uh, them briefly here. Again, I will pause so you guys can 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 comment briefly on any of this as we as we go through them. 
The first, of course, uh, everyone needs another Batman title. This is Batman Urban Legends. This is a 799, 64-page anthology by Chip Zdarsky, Matthew Rosenberg, Stephanie Phillips, Brandon Thomas, Eddie Barrows, Marcos Toe, Ryan Benjamin, Laura Braga, and Max Dunbar. Toby, there's all your Wildstorm guys. We know what they're doing. Uh, they're all coming here to work on Batman Urban Legends. Uh, this is going to be, uh, there's a number of these anthology and, and multiple backup stories. So I will mention price points on these books because um, this, the, the age of the 399 comic is over. Uh, Chip Zdarsky is doing the main story with um, um, Batman and uh, Red Hood. Uh, this is going to be the Grifter story. So the Matthew Rosenberg Grifter story uh, will be in here. So if for the Wildstorm guys, you want this anthology. Uh, before the new ongoing Harley Quinn book starts, uh, we're getting um, uh, a, a Harley Quinn backup here. And then The Outsiders is moving into part of the anthology as well, Black mm-hmm. Lightning, Katana, and Metamorpho. So it feels to me like, at least for now, I don't know what's going to happen in you know six months or a year, but at least for now, DC is like, <sighs> Grifter, Outsiders, mm, Red Hood, not our biggest sellers, but throw them in a Batman anthology, boom, perfect place. And I, I love that. I, I've been saying for years they should do more backups. They should do more like Batman Brave and the Bold, where it's all these characters sort of get introduced and they just kind of do whatever they want. Um, I think this is a great way to get these characters some recognition. And if the books are really well received, then you can spin them out into their own title. Uh, I think people, and it's it's smart to start with Batman as the, as the lead, obviously. I think people will be interested in this. You know, you might just want grifters, and it might not be worth $8 for a 10-page grifter story every month, but that is the, the curse of the anthology, and anthologies tend to not last in America, not in the modern day. Uh, so this is a just is not going to work for everyone, but I, I I think this is the best way to to, to do this stuff uh, in the current marketplace. I just think a grifter miniseries and a new outsiders book would just sort of get lost in the shuffle unless they had like killer killer creative teams. Um, let me know what you guys think. I mean, I agree with everything you said. I just. I hope they see some amount of success to spin out some of these books outside of the anthology, because that's always my hope when they use one of these characters or something as a backup is that they end up in their own solo series. That's always the hope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm going to get it because it's got Harley in it and it's got outsiders in it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's how I'm going to get those stories. But yeah, I mean, I, it's one of those things where I think if you have a, a solid main story and your backup stories are, you know, good introductions or just good stories being told as backups. I think it works. It can work. <clears throat> just, you know, it's one of those, you know, yeah. If it's, if it's, you're just getting it for one thing, that's a, that's a pricey thing for that 10, 10 pages, you know? And I think, you know, thematically they have to make sense. If you are an Outsiders fan, if you're a Harley fan, if you're a Grifter fan, you are probably also a Batman fan. Yeah. Um, You might not be a fan of all four of those, but if you like Grifter, again, you're probably okay. You may, maybe you'll skip Outsiders and and, and Harley entirely, but you'll probably read that Batman story. If you're a Harley fan, you're almost, almost certainly a Batman fan. And Batman regular regularly is a leader or a part of the outsider. So to me, I mean, I think thematically that makes sense. Um, I, I think this is a good idea. Now the price point again might be a, a turn off to some people. Eight bucks is is not cheap, but comics it's sixty four pages, probably square bound. That's just what's going to happen. You know, that's that's what we're going to get. I mean, how much and were it, we getting for the 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 three ninety nine books? Was it like we weren't twenty pages? Yeah, so you're getting more pages technically because. Two comics would have been only forty, and you're getting sixty four out of this one. Yeah, yeah. I think they're again. So, it's, you know, I think they're they're. It's a reasonable uh, price. They're they're big page counts, and I, I think they're going to be. I, I, hopefully, it's successful. You know. Uh, next up, Joker. 
first time since the 70s, the Joker himself gets an ongoing comic book. Now we'll see if this lasts quite as long as uh, uh, as the other one did, a whole nine issues. But, uh, you know, the it's so funny. We were talking previously, and I'm like, clearly – they could go crazy 2020 because it's the 80th anniversary of the Joker. I have no problem with this, but they're going to relax and we're going to not see the Joker for a couple of years, right? Nope. Ongoing comic book. Never mind. Um, coming straight out of the events of Punchline and uh, uh, Batman. Again, it's going to feature a backup with Punchline. So that's where she's going to go. Written by James Tinian, art by Gillen March, backup by Maraca, uh, 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 sorry, by Merca on. Uh, uh, and Dolfo, so it's the same artist, the same writer. He was doing Batman, same person doing a lot of that run uh, with Gillen March. So, uh, man, we'll see. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a huge hit out the door. It's 4 40 pages. Uh, oh, and there's also a Harper Row uh, Bluebird backup as well. So. so there's two? Oh, no, no, sorry. No, it, it's it's it, it's like it's punchline and uh Harper row like it they're it, they're the backup. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Um, man, villain led team, uh, villain led book. Don't see that too often. Uh, I, I mean, I Gillian March has done an amazing job, like with like Joker art. Like, yeah. Back when he was doing Gotham City Sirens, and Joker was predominant. There was a there was a few uh, story arcs where he had Joker in there. So it's like, I mean, the the art fits perfectly with it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. To, to tie in so, fourth is just an amazing writer. So, isn't this the book we talked about last week where the pitch makes it sound just as much a Jim Gordon book as a Joker book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the 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 pitch for it makes it sound interesting enough that, especially if it's a Ten issue miniseries, twelve issue miniseries. Like I, I agree with the sentiments we talked about last week. Of there's always going to be super long term ongoing, but I like the idea of the story they're pitching. Yeah, and it's a direct continuation from what they, uh, you know, what they've already gotten the, yeah. the main Batman title. So I'm a little ir- irked that the Max Brook or the Mark Brooks is a one in two fifty. It's not a one in two fifty. It's their. It's a minimum order of two hundred and fifty copies. Oh, uh, okay. It's okay. sort of their version. They've sort of redone the team variants. Uh, they've lowered the number um, needed to order, but they're not limited per store. Oh, okay. So Just, Mark Brooks is the one. Is okay. Okay. Yeah. So they're only certain stores will. It'll make sense for them to qualify for. But man, what is going on, dog? Oh, my dog's being a jerk. You guys talk amongst yourself for about slave jokes. driving. They're slave driving him. Uh, no, that's on. I mean, the team variants have been pretty interesting, but I don't know if that's a sustainable model. Charlie, do you think it's? Well, I'm never a big fan of books that start require you ordering that many copies just to get a cover. Yeah, like it. It, it makes sense to a degree when they. Um, were attached to huge launch books and a lot of those typically had a like one in 10 you were also getting and one in 50 you were also getting and what like that level of incentive starts to make sense because you sell enough of those price points it kind of pays for the copies you're not going to sell um i just when you deal with the uh, market like this where you have to order a minimum number of copies to qualify to order more copies of a particular cover, it's a very slippery slope between ending up with a massive amount of copies of the regular cover. You're never going to. Well, no, 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 no. You don't have to uh, order the regular cover at all. The, the, these, the thing with these team variants, um, this was started as a way to offer stores something kind of more. So exclusive. what's the 250 then? All right. So let me get to that. Um, they did it. So, uh, a maximum of 20 stores could order 500 copies of a variant cover. They were only oh. available to those stores, right? So we've done two of them to, hmm. you know, uh, minimal success. Um, it's a cool idea. The problem was they started to really crank them out and they were doing like multiple covers on multiple books a month and it didn't make a lot of sense. Um, 
And so, you technically have other stores you're directly competing against for like online sales and that well, kind of stuff. Right. Right. So the thought process here is stores, a lot of stores can't do the full like 3000 copy. Yeah you know, store exclusive covers, so we could sort of have these split exclusive covers. And it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, the Joker and Harley, what they're doing, it's so it's a minimum of 250 copies, but there's no, I assume they just weren't hitting their maximum, so they don't really cap it. Uh, just you have to order 250. Now, well, what will probably happen is a lot of stores will go in, three or five will go in together, and they'll get 50 copies each or whatever, right? And that probably mm-hmm. is how a lot of stores will do this, I'm sure. I'll, we'll try to team up with someone, someone else, a couple stores, yeah. to, to get some, but not 250 of them. Um, but this, yeah, because it's not as limited, um, you can order a min- you have to order a minimum of 250 copies. You're you're looking at the big stores here, the ones that can drive a, a huge amount of um, variance, and yeah, you have to assume a lot of that's going to go online. Yeah, you know, is there ten, you know the maximum number was ten thousand copies? Is there ten thousand people willing to pay a premium on some of these variant covers? No, no, maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand, not ten thousand. Uh, so I, I, yeah, it's an interesting idea i i wonder if they'll i wonder if they'll continue it um i mean i i kind of like the model but it's it's a huge slippery slope because i kind of feel like the model works if you're really kind of going like super top tier variant artists kind of thing well, so so yeah. the, the the what they're doing this month, I, I felt the variants the last two were a little not maybe as strong as they could be. Um, apparently, my dog's just barked this whole podcast, so, so I'm very sorry. Right. Um, Joker, the Marx Brooks cover is really nice. Yes, uh, I think that's going to do really well for stores to go in for that. The the question here, and I'll move over to Harley next because we're getting the new Harley number one by Stephanie Phillips and Riley Rossmo. Um, the this has the potential to be a, 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 a huge seller outside the comic market because yeah, uh, Yoshitaka Amano is doing his very as far as I know. No, that's not true because he did the Sandman thing. That's yeah. So this isn't yeah. even his first DC work, um, but not. I mean, he doesn't do normal stuff like this. So he's doing a Harley cover. It's incredible. Yep. Uh, uh, Yoshitaka Mano, for people that might not know, um, is the kind of the main character designer for the Final Fantasy series. It has been since like the first game. Uh, and he, um, I have a couple of his art books. I have a signed like book uh, thing that I got from Dark Horse years and years ago. Um, he is such an amazing artist. And to see him do... Um, and to see him do uh, something like a Harley Quinn cover is fucking crazy. It's really neat. And this got a lot of um, kind of press outside of the comic uh, sphere. Obviously, Amano's huge in you know Japan and, and in yeah. American video game fandom. So this one uh, has the chance to maybe be something a little bit more special. This one might actually catch people. Um Again, it's a cool idea. Uh, these covers, I, I like. I like it. I just don't know. I don't know what the long term uh, kind of survivability of them are. But we'll we'll see. But yes, Harley Quinn getting a new number one, of course. Um, mm-hmm. Riley Rossmo, I'm a little hit or miss on his art. It yeah, just really I, I, I'm not. Riley, Riley I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan of his, so yeah. I'm like, Ugh. but yeah, we'll see. Yep. Uh, we'll see what's up with that. Now, this one I'm very excited for. No idea how it's going to sell, but I'm always down for some, a book like this, and that's Crime Syndicate. Uh, so the, the Crime Syndicate, the evil Justice League from Earth 3, is getting their own six-issue miniseries by Andy Schmidt and Kieran McCowan with a backup story by Brian Hitch. So uh, he's going to be doing kind of like origin stories of all the characters. Uh, now, uh, the fact that they're just going straight out the gate with a crime syndicate book means, yes, every, you know, basically everything we've 
kind of figured was going to happen in metal is true right we are getting the full infinite multiverse back we're all getting right. all these characters back and in some form I mean, clearly these characters are, you know, are a little bit different uh but but i i, I think this is uh, i'm super excited i love you know we have multiple villain books coming out all at the same time so that's that's cool that's that's uh didn't hear the villain happen like two years ago but but these are actually like ongoing stuff, not just like little one offs. Yeah, like, like yeah, these are. Uh, I'm. I really want to see what they can do with a uh, uh, a crime syndicate book, and especially post boys. Um, they may it's they may ironically be more a little more influenced by kind of the thing that influenced them. I could see them taking taking some some cues from the the Amazon version but of the boys. It's not a black label book, so we're not going to get like. No stuff. Yeah, and I don't think there's any new black label stuff. Uh, you know, the rumors of black label maybe kind of chilling out for a while. I don't know. We'll see if it's true. Suicide Squad is getting a new series as well. Uh, Robbie Thompson and uh, Eduardo um, Pensia. Pen Pensia. Pensia. That sounds right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're um, they're going to bring it in uh, Peacemaker, Talon, and a whole bunch of Scrubs. So no Harley Quinn, no Deadshot, no. I mean, I love Deadshot and Captain Boomerang. Like, don't get me wrong, but uh, but this is the squad where people are going to start getting killed off. So uh, I've, I've I like uh, Tom Taylor, but that last Suicide Squad, those characters he introduced were just straight trash, top to bottom. Yeah. Like, I I didn't get it at all. I have like kill them all they're hor- like they're dumb they're all dumb um so this is amanda waller in being control normal like we're back to super basics uh suicide squad obviously with the show come can't wait cannot wait superman red and blue so another anthology another uh variant cover be a shotaka mano here too it's it's not quite as good as the harley one it's interesting now it's a unique cover uh, so it's going to be uh, kind of like Batman Black and White. This is going to be uh, Superman Red and Blue. So all the all the stories, will, well, the artwork will be done kind of in these red and blue tones. So it could be, it'd be pretty cool. Uh, John Ridley, Wes Craig, Brandon Easton, Dan Waters, Marguerite Benton, uh, Bennett, sorry, Marguerite Bennett, along with uh, Clayton Henry, Wes Craig, Steve Lieber, Danny, and Jill Thompson with a cover by Gary Frank. So that's... Um, uh, it's going to be your writers and artists. Oh, and a variant cover by Lieber Lee Bermejo and Yoshida Kamano. Uh, so another prestige format uh, anthology, six issues. And I, again, I think we're going to see more. You know, I, I, I think Wait, what, we could. What's that second person? Which one? Yoshi. Yoshitaka Amano. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's doing another cover for this. Got it. Uh, yeah. Uh, as again, DC is a little bit getting the books going i think we're gonna you know uh, we're obviously getting a couple uh anthologies and mini series to kind of kind of spruce stuff up here yeah this but, one yeah. this one's this one's not as heavy as the the batman one but no it's um this is 40 pages and 5.99 so yeah it's yeah. it's um it's uh yeah the other one's 64 pages now this one again very much looking forward to this is a uh, i I thought I saw this was an ongoing solicitation says one of 10. So I don't know, Mm -hmm. but there's a new Swamp Thing series by Ram V who's been doing Justice League Dark. It's been fantastic. And uh, uh, art by Mike Perkins and variant cover by Francisco Matina. Uh, So this is a, a, there's going to be a new Swamp Thing. Uh, Levi uh, Cammy will be the next uh, guardian, guardian of the, of the green. So uh, I don't know if we're going to eventually, you know, I don't know. I don't think this is going to be like a reboot of, of Swamp Thing. It just just a new person is getting the getting the the Guardian. So uh, yeah, let's see what they do with this. Uh, I always like Swamp Thing, and Ram V's been he's his stuff's been really good. So another creator uh, team coming straight out of what they did in Future State. Uh, it's Tim Sheridan and Rafa Sandoval are going to do Teen Titans Academy. So uh, this is going to be sort of where the last Teen Titans book led off, kind of leading into some of the stuff we may, we saw in Future State. Uh, this is going to be the original Teen Titans. So Nightwing, Starfire, Raven, Cyborg, and Beast Boy. They are now sort of the teachers of the new generation of, of, um, of 
of heroes. So there's a bunch of new kids and the original Teen Titans are now kind of kind of leading this feels a little bit like Marvel, what they're doing with like Strange Academy and you know getting they've done other books like this in the X Men and New X Men. Oh yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Uh I do like um uh I, I want obviously I'm a big fan of the original characters. Uh, I, I thought the last Teen Titans series sort of the new characters were fine. Uh, you just yeah the series kind of I don't know I don't know they kind of kind of spun its wheels for a, a little too long. Uh, but this, this one looks fun. Um, you know, a bunch of scrubs. Hopefully they're hopefully some of them are okay. But as long as we're getting a bunch of classic OG Teen Titans in here doing their thing, that's great. And if you guys saw some of the um, was it the history of the DC universe? The the other history? No, the um, the uh, the last story, the last story of the DC universe, where they brought back every fucking yeah. Titan yeah. ever. Uh, I I was down with that. I love that. So they had the, the Dan Jorgens Titans. They had um, all like the new villain versions. They had the they like, even had some bad Titans in there. Yeah, they had a bunch of different versions. So uh, hopefully. If nothing else, this is just a, a, a glorious cameos of, of Teen, Titan, Teen Titans from the past uh, coming in here. <clears throat> so uh, one of the big ones, people were, uh, I, had, I had heard from multiple people, not people working at DC, but but a lot of rumors that uh, Mark Wade is going to be taking over the Superman books. And uh, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but that's not the case right now. Because Philip Kennedy Johnson is going to be writing the main Superman title with Sean Lewis as the uh, backup story, Phil Hester, Eric uh, Gepster, as well as Sammy Bassery doing the backup story art. Uh, so this is again, more people coming over from future state coming to do the main book. And um, there's, uh, there's going to be a backup story that will be in uh, both uh, uh, Superman and action comics. So uh, he is he, um, Philip Kennedy Johnson is, is writing uh, both with the backup being by Becky Clinton and Michael Conrad uh, in the in the um, second one. So we're not sure what the ongoing state of of the creative teams, the ongoing state of the backups. Uh, I I we'll see. I, I don't know if these are, these are just temporary. It's not clear if the backups are going to continue past the first issue. They don't really, I don't really say. Um, I, I, I kind of was poking around some of the solicitation texts and interviews, and I wasn't sure the backups of all these. I could see the backups maybe only lasting for a couple months until new books start to continue to launch out because it does feel like the backup, cool. the main story is just two parts, and the backup is just two parts. So it's kind of, mm. I. I it's called. I the, it's I mean, both in Superman and Action, it's Tales of Metropolis by different creative teams. So, is it just? Uh, yeah, that might bring, just be. They, they have somebody come in and tell a Superman story in the back. Maybe, yeah, it might just be random, random one-off stories because it's a Jimmy Olsen story in Superman. Uh, so the Action one is uh, the Midnighter story. So Toby, a little more uh, Wildstorm uh, for you there. So those backups might continue. It may be a Jimmy Olsen backup in um, Superman. Superman and the Midnighter may continue in, in, in action. Like I said, I poked around, but I couldn't I didn't see in, in the interviews like if they confirmed but, that stuff. But it's, it's they're they're called Tales of Metropolis. So it's like it's I think it's just one shot stories because they're both uh, called Tales of Metropolis. So like I said, I don't know. I don't know yeah. because we have a similar thing in Batman and Detective Comics. So Batman's going to continue with James Tinian and Jorge Jimenez. There's a backup story by Joshua Williamson. The backup story is a demon or detective. It's a two part story. That's going to be about kind of the new direction they're taking. Damien, uh, Damien Wayne, the detective comics is by Mariko Tamaki. Who's moving over from wonder woman and Dan Moore is doing the art. So Joshua Williamson's continuing the two part backup there. Now I would assume that Williamson is going to be writing an ongoing Robin book. It's probably just going to come out next month or in a few months. And they are, he, they are starting the story in these backups in Batman mm-hmm. and detective. I mean, two of DC's biggest mm-hmm. sellers, and then they will launch it into its own Robin into his own book. Again, just 
these are going to be five dollars 40 pages you know while we have a, a more limited release schedule they're just padding those books with more content uh, which again I, I don't know, that's fine with me if, if, if as long as it works well but again a lot of this is hypothetical i just don't know i don't they haven't said uh we'll know Every month, I'm sure we're going to get a couple new number ones, similar to what Marvel's done in the past, where they don't do like a hard reboot of every title at once, but they, you know, they slowly roll out new titles. In DC, in their last little expansion of, of titles, they, you know, over the course of three or four months, they had a, a half dozen number ones. So. Uh, but everything's continuing. Superman Batman's continuing. New creative team, Gene, Gene Yang and Ivan Rice. That's that's a good team. I really like that. So uh, they're going to go into some parallel lives of Batman and, and uh kind of like a like a golden age version of batman and superman that should be pretty neat uh ram v is continuing on catwoman again uh fantastic i, I like joel jones so get me wrong but ram v's run has been really good no joel jones did a fantastic job and then ram v just it it, it felt like a seamless transition yeah it, yeah the, re, he's a he's a great writer uh everything he's been writing i've been totally into uh fernando blanco doing the art but, and joel jones is doing the the cover art as well so it's yeah. going to continue and variants by Jenny Friesen. Oof. Yeah, 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 yeah. That should be really good. She's been doing the recent ones. Uh, Flash 768 will continue. New creative team, Jeremy Adams and Brandon Peterson. And uh, uh, the the um, uh, this is going to... Uh, 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 this is from the fallout of Into Frontier. This, this continues everything that's been coming from... Here's in crisis. It's the retirement of Wally West begins after the events spanning from rebirth to Here's in crisis to death metal. The former Kid Flash decides to call it quits. But the current Flash needs his former partner now more than ever. Uh, you know they've said that this is going to be like the start of like kind of the big redemption of Wally West and getting him back. Uh, you know, again, these characters have their arcs. This wasn't like a we hate Wally West and we're going to kill him off and fuck him. Like no, like we're going through like a, a, a story with him. So. We'll see. Flash is continuing again, picking up plots, you know, from all of all of Rebirth from the very beginning. Now, again, I think this is one of the big ones. Brian Michael Bendez and David Marquez on Justice League. And also, all these books are going back to once a month. So if you hated the double shipping, uh, they're done. They're no, no longer double shipping any titles. So this was the, oh, this man, was the band-aid. There were two Batmans a month. Oh, man, I like the double shipping, too. My wallet, all, my uh, cash yeah. register also yeah. likes the double shipping. But what are you going to do? Well, like Batman, I I didn't mind. Other some other titles, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't need this double shift. <laughs> Brian Michael Bendez, David Marquez, backup story by Ram V and uh, Zermancio. Uh, so Justice League Dark is moving to be the backup in Justice League. Uh, so the the ongoing Justice League Dark title has been has been canceled, and now we are getting backup again. Don't know if this is temporary. Don't know if this is ongoing, but. For now, the backups in just the backup of Justice League Dark is in Justice League. The new Justice League team forming out of the events of Metal, Superman, Batman, Flash, okay, good so far, Hawk Girl, okay, cool, Hawk Girl's been in a lot of these, Aquaman, all right, Hippolyta, Hippolyta, Naomi. And Black Adam. And the leader of the team is Green Arrow. I love this team. I love everything about this team. This is a weird ass team. I, what the? I, I mean, I just have a question. Why isn't Flash on the cover? I don't know. Yeah, he's not on the cover, huh? Uh, Black Canary's on the cover, though. Yeah. Huh? In the solicitation, it says Flash. But yeah, Black Canary's on the team, too. Maybe it was supposed to be Black Canary. Because <laughs> uh, it doesn't say Black Canary in the solicitation. Yeah, you know it's actually funny when I even look at the uh, when I do go to the well, no Flash is up there in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is like I'm looking at like kind of like their like their like their like their, uh, their variant cover here, where it just shows like kind of the history of the just um, the Justice League. I don't know, I don't know, but I'm uh, the Flash still yeah. isn't in that group shot though. No, no, he top left, top left. They're bo- they both are. No, well, that's just history stuff. stuff. The, to the left is all yeah, the history yeah. stuff. So really weird with Wonder Woman. Don't 
know, like, Paula, I mean, clearly she disappears. She's gone, something, right? I mean, the, the Adventure Future saying, I love Hippolyta being on the Justice League. That's fantastic. Uh, and I, Bendis is going to kill it on Justice League. I, I, I was, I had Teen Titans in my head that he would do great with like a, like a dual Teen Titans Young Justice title, but I really, you're going to get Bendis Justice League. I mean, that's just the way it works. Um, and I want to see him write Green Arrow and Black Canary. That's going to be, that's going to be his like Luke Cage and uh, Jessica Jones, right? Uh, are those two especially being the leaders of the team? Especially, uh, I, he's I, he's going to have a lot of fun with these characters, uh, and, and, and the well, dynamic he, between he's, Green he's Arrow already, and, and what's that? He's already played around with them in uh, in Event Leviathan. Sure, right, and they were really good in yeah. that, but they were they were just like a small part of it. Being the actual like leaders of the the team, yeah, I. I I got some high hopes for Justice League. I'm a little bummed that Justice League Dark is kind of being pushed into a backup. Yeah, me too. Uh, but again, we, we have that ongoing Swamp Thing or whatever. And the Swamp Thing series. Is. Um, and I, again, this might just be we want to get readers in. So we're going to mm-hmm. give them two or three parts of this Justice League book. And then we just relaunch it. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Aquaman is not on the solicitation. Red Hood's not on the solicitation. I don't think it is. Um, is another book. There was like one other one that wasn't on there too. Uh, so they may just be rolling these guys out slowly. Mm. Oh, Legion, Legion's I, not on there. I actually really like the way that they seem to be doing these sort of backups in these cases because yes, the the higher price point on some of this stuff is a little shocker in some ways for people. But as long as it feels like you're getting a hefty book, and I I. I think using the backups this way, where even if it just goes for like the first arc, you get basically the first arc of a Justice League Dark book and then spin off to its own book. I think that has the potential to actually get more readers to some of these other titles. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's the. That's I, I keep thinking back to sort of like the Shonen Jump and like that kind of stuff where not everything necessarily translates to a big hit, but it gives you enough content to figure out what is going to translate into a big hit. Yeah. And I I think I like that the backups are kind of tied to what the book is and not just some random story of something else. I think that that'll help out a lot. Yeah. That's always been the goal with these. So, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I liked it when they had those different, um, those backups back in the, was the mid 2000s, late 2000s. Yeah. They lasted for, you know, a little while, but they didn't last for very long, unfortunately. Uh, okay, we are going to move on now to Wonder Woman. Oh, sorry, no, Nightwing, Nightwing, T- Toby, be ready. Uh, Nightwing's getting a big, big boost. Tom Taylor and Bruno Redondo are doing uh, Nightwing, again, same creative team from Injustice. Big big hit, so uh, I really look forward to this. Nightwing's back to back to blue, blue and black, baby. I love that main cover. Uh, oh, you kind of see, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the city sort of in the the Nightwing blue uh, blown. Really good cover design on these Infinite Frontier titles too. Wonder Woman by Becky Cloonan and Michael Conrad, Travis Moore. Backup story by Jordi Belair and uh, Polina Gunshow. That's close. Uh, so this is kind of the big question we're going to find out um, post death metal, post future state. Something big is happening with Wonder Woman. Uh, she is waking up in the middle of the uh, some rampaging battle of mythological beasts and nobody knows why. So she's stuck in Valhalla. So is Wonder Woman dead? You know, where does she go from here? Clearly something major happens to her throughout the course of the, the next couple of months. We'll find out. Uh, sensational Wonder Woman. So second title, Stephanie Phillips and Megan Hetrick are going to do the first. Uh, this is going to be an anthology so it's going to have a uh, uh, multiple, I believe, multiple creative teams. Um, maybe Perry Street they switch up. So uh, that's going to be the first. So, oh, man, I don't know the Wonder Woman's ever had two ongoing titles at the same time. And that's it. That's the that's the bulk of the new titles. I mean, we still have returning titles: American Vampire, Batman Black and White. So that's continuing. Batman Catwoman. Uh, White Knight presents Harley. Batman vs. Ra's al Ghul finally is coming back out. 
the Dreaming, Green Lantern Season 2 wraps up. So, of course, we're going to get the new Green Lantern book probably in a month or two after that. I'm so, scared to read that Batman Ra's al Ghul book. <laughs> get the trade once it's done, huh? Probably, but I'm just... I, I'm just going to say, because the the whole, like... It falls into that category of something I should love, but I have a strong suspicion if I start reading it, that's not how I'm going to feel, so... Yeah, no. No. Uh, the Joker Harley Criminal Sanity Looney Tunes Mad... Man, uh, that Man Bad miniseries is, is finally coming out. The Joker Harley Criminal Sanity, that's the last issue. Yeah, Other History of DC Universe. That's been really good. Uh, Rorschach, Strange Adventure, Sweet Tooth, so uh, Truth and Justice, which was the anthology that was announced last month. Uh, so yeah, still a lot of lot of books coming out. Uh, just you know, we're, we're far from from a small month here. There's some big, 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 big titles here. But yeah, that double shipping going away reduce, reduces the uh, title count and definitely some some missing titles. Uh, but yeah, so that's our that's our post future state look at DC and. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I, I think there's some good creative teams there. They're keeping most of the big guys around. Uh, most of the big creators at DC are, are still doing titles. Scott Snyder, I, I think he said on Twitter, like he has stuff playing. I, I thought he was basically done. I thought Metal was kind of it. Uh, but he says he has stuff coming in 2021 from DC. So there's more stuff coming. And I think it's outside of American Vampire. At least that's the way he made it sound. Uh, so, yeah. Um, you know, if John's is doing a Stargirl miniseries, that's fantastic. Uh I, I would assume Mark Wade's going to do more. Uh, you know, um, we're going to get probably that Robin book by Joshua Williamson. A lot of the creators are sticking around. A lot of new creators coming in uh, to pick up the, the the titles that are you know getting creative team changes. So, yeah, to me, it's business as usual at DC. This is just what happens every now and again. So. Well, and and for me, I'm, there's a little bit of a like an excitement because you're like I'm you're not sure which one's going to shine what's going to be the one that like really just blows your, your mind how good it is, you know, cause when you, I mean, new 52 dropped, you know, you had like swamp thing and <clears throat> animal man and yeah. demon knights and all of these titles that were like, what? But people were like, this is awesome. Yeah, there is. Uh, th- that was definitely the part I liked the most about new 52 was they, they went pretty hard on some of those, non-traditional titles which i love Mm -hmm. uh i would love to see more of that but i'm 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 happy with what we've got uh i I, we will see some of that stuff as the as the line expands out you know they're never going to get rid of these characters entirely um you know it may be a while before we get another eye vampire book but someone will remember and someone will do it so (laughs) uh charlie toby anything um and jump out at you guys. Anything that's going to you feel I like mean, grabbing things that are missteps? What's your, what's your thoughts? It's like most of these big sort of restart things. I'm very curious, and I'll probably read the first issue or two of most of the stuff. Probably not directly as it's coming out, though. So, But I, I always like these sort of fresh starts. It's part of the reason why I've always been a sucker who bought every like zero year issue or every <laughs> right 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 yeah because i i do kind of like things when it's got a fresh start where you can judge what you actually love and sometimes stuff can surprise you because you bring up like the eye vampire and stuff that is never a book i would have jumped on intentionally other than sort of the new 52 and ended up being one of my favorite books out of that yeah so, yeah, I uh, I think Toby's just excited for uh, Tom Taylor on Nightwing. Well, I like well, this uh, Wolverine run. The, the, yeah, the Laura, the you know, all new Wolverine. X twenty three one yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, you listed a bunch of stuff off, and I'm a visual person, so <laughs> I was just drawing blanks half the time. To be honest, I'm <laughs> sure, of I'm course, yeah, missing books when they come out. Uh, you know, you click on the Facebook thread and follow through on the uh, the list of the solicitation well, I that posted. Okay, well, I, I didn't put two and two together. So. <laughs> uh, no, but, you know, I'm sure there's some of the books I wanted to check out. Uh, but, yeah, I'm actually really excited for, for a future state at the moment, and then we'll, we'll see. 
afterwards. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure of me not paying attention 100%, I'm going to get me sold on some books I actually want. <laughs> and, you know, and some of these, uh, the anthology books you mentioned, I mean, it really depends. If they're family together with books, I would have bought anyways. Like, you know, I, I would have bought Outsiders and I would have bought a Cassie book and so on. If they bunched up together, then, you know, it would be books I would have bought mm. on the single issues anyways. That's actually a big one. Um, the uh, the Black Bat, uh, 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 a spoiler, Birds of Prey, Oracle. There's definitely something coming with them because they've been pushing them. Yeah. They've been in a lot of recent okay. titles. But I think so I'm that, sure. uh, Harper Row is a backup of the Joker book. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's 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 su- super annoying. Uh, well, but she was in the the punchline miniseries that, or the punchline one shot. That's where that character is going to be interacting. No interest in the damn Joker book at all. <laughs> but a Harper Row book, I would totally pick up. So <laughs> that one, I'm like, ah, oh, that's that's fairly annoying. <laughs> so I'll, I'll wait for the trade that will collect. Um, six issues, which will be one regular comic book issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and go that way probably. Uh, so lots of stuff, lots of stuff with uh, Infinite Frontier in the new DC universe. So yeah, good stuff. Looking forward to it. Gonna be soon. It, it'll be in 2021. A better year already. Yeah, very soon. Very soon. Uh, we got some. We got some questions. We got lots of questions here on Twitter, and sorry, Patreon, and then some on Twitter. I didn't actually. This was going to take as long as it did, so maybe we won't get to as many as the Twitter questions as I as I thought we would. But it'll, we'll we'll read a few, I'm sure. First question. This comes from Tim. This is the question. This is the question that always gets asked, and you, we have to pick your we have to pick a side. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Why or why not? Yes, it is a Christmas movie. Okay. I- why is this a thing? I, 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 I don't know. Because people people don't realize that when you're playing Christmas music and it's at a Christmas party, it's a Christmas movie. No, it I, is an action movie that takes place during Christmas. Yeah, Correct. But why is this such yeah. a thing? Like, why is everybody talking about it? I mean, the point of Every it. year, this is the, my favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard. Some it's asshole basically said people's it. way of saying... I don't like traditional Christmas movies, so if I have to pick a favorite Christmas movie, I will pick a movie that happens to take place during Christmas. If you're going to say that, say fucking Gremlins or say uh, my personal favorite, Jack Frost. You know, there are many great Christmas movies that are not Christmas movies. Yes, Die Hard is an action movie that takes place at Christmas. Well, what Iron Man 3 is not a Christmas movie. What I always find die hard. is people go, they scream that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I'm like, why aren't you saying Christmas. Die Hard and Die Hard 2? Like, yeah, neither of them are Christmas like, movies. They're action movies. Does that mean place. Batman a Christmas movie? Yeah, Batman, right. Batman Returns. Yep. Right? Yep. Batman. Not a Christmas movie. Fat Man is not a Christmas movie? Batman Returns? No, Fat Man. Batman. I don't know what Fat Man is. It's a brand new movie with Mel Gibson. Okay, I take your word for it. Is it a Christmas movie? He's Santa Claus. Well, then that would be a Christmas movie. If you're like, I like, I will give you like, Bad Santa is is a Christmas movie. Th- that, That's okay. I'm just going to classify Wonder Woman '84 as a Christmas movie just because <laughs> it comes out on Christmas. <laughs> sure. There you go. So can I? So if I were doing that, every Star Wars thing is pretty much Christmas at this point. Yeah, I'll take space on Life Day. It's a it's a Life Day movie. Oh dear God, don't do that. Craig Anderson wants to know what's your favorite run that is not a famous run. For me, it's the Demetrius run on Marvel Team Up. Tons of obscure or rarely featured characters like Gargoyle, Watcher, Dominic Fortune, Leapfrog, and more. Meaningful stories and solid art by Gamel. Truly one of my favorite runs of all time. What is a what is a favorite run that's not a famous run? Famous or popular? Famous, like, like if you liked the the late sixties Daredevil run, that would not be the famous run. That would not be the Brubaker or Bendis yeah. or Frank Miller run yeah. or the Stanley okay. original. Okay. It's like, yeah, yeah. What's what's a what's a favorite run that is not a famous 
run. I'm thinking. I uh, I I do well. <laughs> I think people generally are not. It's definitely not at nearly as popular as some of the other runs. But I like the Mark Wade Legion of Superheroes stuff. The mid '90s uh, zero year run. Uh, part of that because that's kind of my introduction to the Legion. Uh, I I I, I kind of remember that being not maybe the most well received, uh, but it was some of the first books I read, and then that kind of stuck with me. I didn't continue Legion regularly until uh, a couple years later, but uh, that was that was sort of where I got my start start on Legion, and I do like that run quite a bit. Uh, that's my favorite run on Legion, but it's definitely a definitely up there more so than most anyone else would 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 52 count well 52 is a book it's a run and by some of the biggest creators in dc's history so no that 52 does not count uh i'm gonna go with the grunwald cap run which i really like i don't know if that counts because i don't know it was a grunwald run i just yeah. liked it when i read it when i was a kid yeah <laughs> that, 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 that that's it. yeah yeah, and that runs pretty. I mean, is that a respected run? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, I think. Yeah, more. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I think it's kind of forgotten in the modern day. But uh, Cap never. I don't think Cap really had that Frank Miller Daredevil run, right? I mean, that that defining run prior to. Yeah, but the Grunwald was just fun. Cap more modern. Heroes yeah, thing, though, just yeah. like that's fun. fun. And I never well, so, it was all Grunwald until Toby. You, yours clearly is like the Tom DeFalco Avengers brown coat, like see that. So I'm 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 gonna research this because I'm starting to think. I mean, I just been calling them the brown coat Avengers because you kind of been drilling this into, <laughs> but it might be the era before that. So as more of these epic collections come out, and I, as I I more get to map out my 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 history of comic book reading of what it, again I read all of this stuff in German, right? So I don't actually, you know, I didn't pay attention to artists or or writers at the time as a kid. Yeah. But as I'm like remap, not Tom DeFalco. Shit, who is it? Um, was it fake? Ah, uh, crap. Uh. Let me, let me look it up. Let me look. Keep talking. Keep talking. Yeah, but but you know, as 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 more and more of these epic collections come out, and I'm piecing kind of like my childhood back together, like these fat because some of them I just read you know a few issues and then you know never got to see them again. So as I'm kind of like piecing the giant pu- puzzle back together, um, yeah, the Grunwald uh, cap is fucking phenomenal, and I didn't realize it was all him. Uh, you know the. Uh, uh, the Daredevil run in the '90s was good. The early one, like the sorry, of, of course, Bob Harris is who I meant. Not Bob, Bob, Harris. Bob Harris. That's that's your Hercules, your uh, uh, Quicksilver. Um, See, uh, I remember a big Hercules guy. I, I liked, think uh, was that Cersei. Black, Knight, Black Knight. Cersei, I liked Cap. You know, and the yeah, that, that, that's when they crossed over with the Avengers. It was like a, is that the, with the X Men. I mean, with the X Men. I think that's definitely my favorite stuff. Um, is that yeah. the Galactic Storm era? Yeah, yeah roughly. Yeah, that that Probably era, right. that time. But yeah, again, yeah. I, I'm not entirely sure if the era I really like was right before or right after, but it's in that neighborhood. Let's put it that way. Yeah, uh, you need to look around like issue like 350 of Avengers and tell me if that's one year. That's when you're. When all the had all the foil well, covers, I had I had different covers. That's why this is all hard, right? Yeah. How about I this? Like, I'll go with Cassandra, uh, Cassandra Kane Batgirl run. The thing. Yeah. I really enjoyed uh, Paul Dini's run on Detective. Like, See, this is this is in a nutshell. The problem I have is the second you say somebody like Paul Dini, <laughs> I consider it a respected <laughs> like. And it's but the same it's problem I had with, like, hey, Mark Wade's Legion, because I kind of feel like the second that you... Was, that was, like, early Mark Wade, though. That's yeah, the difference. But, but it's the same kind of thing where, like, when when writers get to a certain status... The, the Tom Payer. The everything Tom Payer they ever Wade. worked on before, it gets elevated to a different status than it necessarily had at the time. I will, I will um, correct See the Tom Payer Legion of Super. Oh yeah. no! Look, there we go. I totally. I'll just take him. 
the Tom Payers run on Our Man. There you go. There's my pick. I love that run. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's my pick. I don't know. Most of the stuff that comes to my mind is stuff that I don't consider a flew under the radar run. It just wasn't necessarily the most sort of successful. Like, I love the um, Chip Zdarsky Howard the Duck book. And yes, it did get collected in trades and that kind of stuff, but it technically got canceled, yep. never came out in hardcovers, and I have no clue. When they do a Howard the Duck movie, then they'll probably do new collections of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of feel like for the most part, most of the runs I really, really enjoy are because a particular writer was on that run or set a particular tone that I like. Like, I do like um, that Howard the Duck book because it's a little more zany, and it's the same reason I like the slot She-Hulk book, and, like, mm. there's that certain tone that if you get the right character with the right creative team and stuff, it doesn't necessarily get it knocked out of the park, per se, in terms of sales or anything else, but it always elevates those books for me. Yep. There's a, there's a lot of big books out there. And, you know, there's a lot of books that get kind of lost in the shuffle. So just get them. You know, look for those gems. There's diamonds in the rough. There's always good books. From Tim. He says, not that Twitter is necessarily representative, but it seems like Tom King has been facing a bit of backlash in comics over the last year or so. Do you guys get the same sense? And if so, what do you think accounts for the backlash? I don't understand it. He's at the height of his powers, in my opinion. Tim. Oh, boy buddy old pal people were f- like uh, like i i do not subscribe to any of this so so i i bow at the altar of everything tom king does he's my favorite current regular comics writer everything he does is amazing however the internet has a different opinion that is the opinion that his batman run was slow and plotting he promised the marriage of batman and catwoman issue 50 pulled the rug out, rug out from underneath them People were revolted. People were pissed. They didn't like the storyline. I mean, he killed Alfred. They weren't paying attention. But um, if you want to be technical, Dan Didio killed Alfred. Um, Everything Tom King sounds like he had no interest in doing that. And he's kind of forced to. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, uh, I've talked to some customers who really hated his run on Batman. And uh, yeah, I've talked to some friends exactly the same thing. But I feel like they already had that opinion prior to like, I don't necessarily feel like the hatred towards him is new. Maybe it's a little more vocal because I kind of feel like the people who are in love with Tom King's runs have kind of pulled back a little bit. So in the absence of people talking to storm about how much they love his Batman run and that kind of stuff, you now have a certain, uh, vocal majority of the negative coming out right now. Well, you don't have an ongoing Batman book. You have Rorschach and Strange Adventure, which is just not going to get the same sort of... Don't forget Batman Catwoman. Right. Well, and that might change it as well. But but up until now, you basically only have, you know, the ongoing fans of those titles versus, you know, the the never ending what, but people that have decided that they hate Tom King and they have to tell everyone every day constantly how much they hate Tom King and they will tell you this forever. Yeah, well, so they, you know, guys are like eleven or twelve years old and have nothing better to do than that. <laughs> sure, what it seems like. Well, I think also some of it's misguided because I think some of these are Tom Taylor haters, but they're just confused. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's the joke. There's the joke. Uh, I don't know. For me, it just comes down to every writer is going to have people who absolutely hate them and absolutely love them. And I oh, certainly you, fall in that spectrum with certain people. And so, oh, if you, if you follow Dan Slott, I mean, he's like, people are still like, you killed Peter Parker. He's like, fucking get over it. That <laughs> was like, that was like six writers ago. And you like it, like it. Like forever ago. Like, what is wrong with you people? Like, there's a story arc. It's all fake. Um, yeah, people that thought Batman and Catwoman were getting married were not paying attention to Tom King's run, and they were they they were clearly not. They didn't. They, they were like, oh, they're gonna get married. Oh, I better buy twenty copies. Those are the people that got pissed because again, 
they got duped, quote unquote, into into think, no, it's fantastic. Batman fifty was one of the best issues of that mm-hmm. year. It's a it's an amazing issue. Um, uh, you know, I, I understand if some people don't like his writing style. Uh, it's fine, and not everyone likes everyone's writing mm-hmm. style. I, I I I specifically got one or two customers that I know like really dislike his writing style, but they also tend to dislike Bendis's writing style and Jeff John's writing style. And I'm like, I just don't think you like these, like the kind of modern what comic comics guys are, are reading. Not, they, they, well, they sometimes do read those and then they just complain about them. That also happens a lot too. Yeah. But yeah, at least yeah. they're educated in their complaints. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but Tom King though is I, I I still think fantastic. But yeah, no, he's he gets shit online constantly. I, I, I didn't I'd Scott go Snyder crazy. go through something similar with it, like like during Zero Snyder. Year, like he got like yeah, a little bit, like, but not like not like this, yeah, not this like that. True. Snyder gets a little bit of shit online, but not not that much. Um, like Nick Spencer, people hated him. Oh God! Years. Secret but Empire. Think, <laughs> yeah, in Cap, and every now and again, I still see people kind of talking about that stuff. But overall, I think his like his run on like his Spider Man run has been fantastic, and I think it sort of has maybe redeemed him in in some people's eyes. Um, but again, it's mostly from uh just really ignorant people that can't wait for a story to finish Uh, regardless of what i thought of secret empire i mean i thought secret empire was straight trash um but the cap run was okay it was an interesting story i was willing to see where it goes um you know just get fucking new 50 sue out of there and 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 we're done um whatever what the hell was her name i can't remember what was her name new 50 sue no but that's the joke it was the same character in both both universes at the same time kobe kobe Cubic? It started with a K, I, didn't it? Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I can't remember what her name was. Uh. Just terrible, absolute trash character. But whatever, because I like I'm, I'm not sitting here harassing him on Twitter, and his amazing Spider-Man stuff is really good. Kobe. So Kobe, yeah. Uh, so sure, so whatever. Bad. You don't like a run, don't like a run. Move on. You know these guys don't last in these books forever. Uh, yeah, and if you didn't like his run, you probably love James Tynion's run because he's like super over the top superhero. Mm-hmm joker action crazy crap and it's great too it's yeah. great in a different way but batman catwoman one is it's great rorschach's been really good strange adventure is still one of the best books on the market so there you go christopher haith he's got a nice nice big question here so let's go through this um he says i happened to wear my comics conspiracy t-shirt at my regular shop last wednesday and a fellow customer recognized the name and said nice shirt i normally would have a small uh i i normally I would normally have a small complaint about the shirts as they seem to run a bit small, but then I remembered that you guys don't have fat people in California. It made sense. Let me tell you about everyone on this podcast, okay? We are all not the skinniest people on Earth. There are plenty of large people in comic book stores. I don't think those run shirts. I think those those shirts run run okay. You have to wash them properly, otherwise they shrink a little. Yeah, I mean, that's every T-shirt. Uh, this is you guys dealing, well, you guys deal with a lot tighter during the COVID time, though. <laughs> Put on those COVID 15. Yeah. Um, you guys are dealing, you guys deal with the geek culture on a more personal level than most. For most of us, their only outlet is social media and Facebook, Reddit, and especially Twitter. Uh, but it seems like they are a cesspool of misery and malcontent. My two parts is one. In your opinion, is negativity an accurate cross section of how most people really feel about the current state of things? Okay, let's let, let's pause and take that take that question. Um, Repeat it, please. Uh, in your opinion, is the negativity an accurate cross section of how most people really feel about the state of? Oh, actually, well, let me read the second part because they do kind of tie in. He says, in, in part two, in this day and age, we are, there's never been as much science fiction, Star Wars, comic book culture available in our lives, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we have more reasons to be happier than ever before. It just seems people are becoming increasingly unhappier than ever before. Um, is this really the case? If so, why? It's just people, they just like to complain. People don't talk about the stuff they like. They only talk about the stuff they hate, especially on social media. 
You never talk about stuff like that. I don't talk about Marvel on social media. I'm and I'm guilty of that myself, for sure. Right? It's easier to dunk on something in a in a, in a dumb tweet and send it off <laughs> to have a nuanced conversation about why you really like something, right? Um, you know, your dumb Twitter joke is just like, oh, this stupid thing, blah, and send it out. Uh, but yeah, people, I, the the more you give people, the more they want something else, right? There's a there's a horrible selfishness and especially nerd fandom where they think they're owed all this stuff and that this is their properties and yeah. yet that, that 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 what they think is right. God knows I'm I also guilty of that, but I don't tr- I try not to like let it let it uh you know affect my uh, opinion on stuff. I can have theories or like what I would like, but you know, contrary to popular belief, it's only come up a lot more recently because of Mandalorian. But I don't actually sit here and like trash Last Jedi start the, from the beginning of my day to the time I go to bed. There are a lot of people that do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I try to not do that, but a lot of people do just talk trash all day. So. For me, what what this kind of comes down to, it's not really to say that now is worse than before in some ways, but I feel like what it really comes down to is if something meets your expectations, you don't really tend to acknowledge it. Like I read a lot of comics that I enjoy reading, but I don't talk about them much because they're just good comics. They're solid comics. They met my expectation. Um when something really exceeds my expectation, which is part of the reason why I was always so vocal about like John's green lantern run and that kind of stuff is because I went in with a certain excitement level and expectation. And then it just went so far above that, that I became very vocal about that. And when something doesn't meet your expectation, in fact, when it turns out to be a huge disappointment compared to what your expectation was, that same level of vocalness kind of comes out about it. I kind of feel like we live in a pretty good place where most of the time our expectations of what we want out of a story or whatnot is being met. Um, And exceeding people's expectations is a lot harder in a lot of ways than not meeting the expectation. Well, look at look at you know um, we'll, we'll kind of sidestep comics here for a second. Look at something like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I'm sure you guys all follow. Oh yeah, and hopefully most <laughs> that, people that, that listening sh- that, have, that shit storm. Yeah, I'm sure even if you don't play video games, you've probably heard about what happened with this game. Yeah, and you know the fact that they gave right this this uh, completely broken game. They like, like uh, you know the best possible version to to reviewers and then the real game, you know, like people were like, Oh, the, the one female critic gave the game a seven. Fuck her. You know, she doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. And then the game comes out and it's like, Oh, this game is unfucking playable yeah. to almost every person. Right. So that, you know, people get mad. They get mad. If you think something's only okay, they get mad. If you think it's, a nine out of a 10, they still get mad because it's a, it must be a 10 out of a 10 because they love this thing. Even if they've never seen it or done anything with it. Like look at the Snyder cut people. I want to see this movie, but they're all fucking out of their minds. Look at the people that hate Zack Snyder. They're also out of their minds because they're so angry, just jaded and they just hate and they refuse to even give it a, give it a second. So like it's, I've said this for so long, like, this is weird. Like everything's going to be a one or a 10 and, and anything in between is just like, no, it has to be the best or the worst thing. Yeah. And that's just, that's all fandoms right now. It's horrible. That's video games. It's comics. Uh, that's, that's everything. Well, but I think it's the one or the 10 that tends to be vocal. I think sure, the people sure. who think it was just a seven don't tend to engage. No, no, no. Right, 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 right. They don't. Yeah. You know, like I'll give my quick hits, you know, God, I read 20, 30 comics a week, probably well, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm good. Yeah. Um, and I probably don't talk about almost any of them, you know, but the big ones, the one, you know, if something really catches me off or if it's a, if it's a big event book, I'm going to say something, but you know, 
the next issue of Superman, I don't have a lot to say unless something really amazing happens in it, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can, I can, I can take a picture of some dumb Rob Liefeld cover and dunk on it in thirty seconds on Twitter, and then just shoot it off because that takes no thought, and no, no process. But that's what goes out, right? Yeah, but I think that's sort of indicative of the strength of the current market is the fact that, yes, there's a handful of stuff that people focus on sort of the negativity and a handful of stuff that people talk to no end about how much they're loving. But it means the rest of the books are just good sort of solid books. Like, if, as you said, if... Superman was amazing, or if it was horrible, more people would be talking about it. The fact that people aren't saying more about it means people are just enjoying it. Yeah. 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 You know, I think the, the, the worst something, can, you know, it's almost the worst something can be is mediocre, right? Cause if it's bad, people have a conversation about it. If it's good, people have a conversation about it. Um, so but but that's fine, right? A seven is fine, and a six is fine. A six should be fine, but it's not. Yeah, people are just bitter. Yeah, and unhappy. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. A lot of them are. Welcome to the digital, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the digital age. <laughs> and then they can they can t- they can vent that on Twitter. They can vent it on Facebook. Because yeah, now yeah, now the, the, now the entire world will know they're that they're angry and that they're mad and yeah. Oh, and, and yeah, I mean, we have an absolute, just, just uh, d- disgusting amount of, of, of content for everyone that wants even anything these days, you know, um, I, I don't get mad at some fucking Thundercats cartoon. That's not made for me. I just don't, I don't care. I don't watch it. Like, People are like, oh, you've you've ruined Thundercats forever for me. What have you done? Get over yourself. Make it a kid. Make it a show for kids. Like, yeah. Fucking grow up. Shiro's not showing enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shiro was sexier when I was a kid. <laughs> How dare these women make Shira for women? What's wrong with them? It's so horrible. People are fucking scumbags. Like, what's wrong with everyone? Well, I think the other issue is, is like, it, you that stuff to like, like, keep. Like, Ryan Johnson comes back to do another Star Wars thing. I just don't watch it. But that's fine. I'm not going to sit here and harass the guy on Twitter for like 20 years about it. I just don't watch it. I'm like, nope. I, sorry. I, I gave it a shot. Not my thing. Move on. Right. I mean, I'd be maybe frustrated if Ryan Johnson was going to write and direct every Star Wars thing forever going forward. Maybe then I would have a problem, but like, this is not my thing. Okay, I said my piece multiple times. But you're Move so, re- you're, but you, you are, you're, you're, you're ready, mind, body, and soul for Patty Jenkins' Star Wars movie. Oh fuck yeah! I mean, everything <laughs> Star Wars coming up looks amazing. Everything, every just solid, everything looks amazing. So yeah, yeah, every part of it. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's it's a small amount of people that are like that it's just yeah it's just i think it's it's amplified on the internet and that's the problem we're gonna quick hit all this stuff here fast <laughs> answers only we have a lot of twitter questions i'm not going to go through every one but i'll go through the ones that are quick travis says you're going to watch wonder woman on friday for a review next third uh, next tuesday right that is correct we are going to have our wonder woman 84 review on next tuesday yep. so tune so in for that What's that? So five hours? It's going to be longer than the movie. Five hours. Um, <laughs> his, his main question is, are you keeping or resubbing to DC Universe for DC Infinite? Uh, uh, I already it have. It, it, it billed me today. Or yesterday? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Gonna have another- I never even got to use that code either. See, this is why I hate fucking subscriptions, man. I don't understand why you love that shit, man. I fucking hate this Subs- crap. As Kevin says, subscribe once and never unsubscribe. It's amazing. It's the greatest invention ever. Thing of all time. I'll probably Rock and Charlie. open DCU up I mean, right here. For me, it just comes down to you have a certain amount of personal responsibility to cancel it if you're going to cancel it or keep it. Especially because most of these, if you cancel, they just will stop billing you the next time. It's not like they... 
Like yeah. you don't have to cancel the day of. You just yeah, you cancel can, it and then it stops. You can buy a one year subscription and then cancel it the next day, and you'll ne- and they and it'll you'll just have that year. Yeah, yeah. And I have another um, year after that. Uh, I, I was never subscribed, so and I didn't subscribe to the new one. And oh no, I am absolutely completely happy with reading comics that way right now. Um, I, I am looking forward to it actually switching to Infinite just because they're still not caught up to that six month point that they're supposed to be at when Infinite launches. Right. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to that influx of more current books coming in. But yeah, I'm I am perfectly content being able to sort of use Marvel Unlimited for some of the Marvel and DC Infinite for some of the DC. And then I can always buy the hardcovers and trades and certain single issues and that kind of stuff. But the fact that I can just kind of go, I'm going to catch up on this run right now without having to decide, do I want to buy it to own it right now or just read it? Yeah. Yeah. Is amazing. (laughs) Uh, from Stefano, he says, anyone reading the winter, uh, endless winter DC event feelings one way or another? Uh, yeah, I'm caught up with everything except for this week's and I've, I really enjoyed it. It's been a fun little event. Yeah, it's been, it's, it's been interesting. I, 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 the hopping between issues hasn't been too bad, like with the story. Like, so it's fun. It's fine. yeah, it's just, you know, it's a little one-off thing. It's cool. Let's see where they go with it. It's a seven. It's a seven. Stefano, <laughs> not gonna, not gonna hate it. Not gonna say it's my favorite thing of all year. Got a couple questions that asked very similar things. So we'll grab from Joshua's here. This is what's your favorite holiday comic covers or stories? I always try to grab some com- uh, holiday, uh, Christmassy covers uh, when we're doing like talks, you know, thing posts on social media for the store hours and everything yeah. like that. And there's a lot of great uh, Christmas covers for. Um, Especially a lot of the Disney comics, but also Wonder Woman and a lot of the, a lot of the Golden Age DC books. Yeah. There's some very goofy covers. I really liked uh, Frank Cho's Harley holiday covers when he was doing those on the variants. But yeah, Charlie, Toby, quick hits, quick. Hits. I mean, story. I always go to the Larflees special. Like that oh, was amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's also been a couple of like Lobo Christmas books, if <laughs> I recall. I don't know. I, I like I like Christmas books that don't take themselves too seriously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from Kyle, he says, Carl Barks or Don Rosa, the two masters of, of the ducks. Um, I am in the uh, I'm, I'm complete on my Don Rosa collection and I am on my way with Carl Barks because they've been phonographic has been reprinting all of them. And uh, I have I, I have I have honestly not read enough of either to make a a a real serious decision. I've read bits and pieces of both and these complete collections are now my chance to read them complete. Uh, But I will guess Carl Barks because he is the one that did it all. Even Don Rosa will tell you he is an imitator of Carl Barks. So there you go. Ooh, let's book two best Christmas present you received as a child. Clearly the game boy. I have I have photographic proof of that being the pre- best present I ever received as a kid. That'd be my Game Boy. Uh, a TV. What kind I, of TV? Like big one of those like thirty-six inch or forty-inch tube TVs. You finally Your got. Parents a- gave you a, a TV for Christmas as a kid. Yeah. That's a weird Christmas present as a kid. Oh, like a kid, kid. Yes, you uh-huh. received as a child. I don't remember. The bike. I don't know. Good answer, Brock. Good yeah. answer. Good answer. Good I, answer. Good answer. I don't remember. Good answer. Man. So obviously, I didn't really get. Show me bike, Toby. I'll, I'll second that Game Boy man because that weird ass yeah. German thing. I'm playing, can give you when you. I mean, I'm, I'm still, still talking to guys on like Facebook Marketplace on like games I missed, and you know, I'm still looking for actual Game Boy, not even Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance. I'm actually <laughs> to this day up Game Boy games. So. Uh, I was the N sixty four kid like seven years prior with with that with that and with the Game Boy like I, I've got video proof I've got photographic proof so 
Well, I don't have photographic proof, but I have memories of walking home with the Game Boy playing Ninja Turtles. And <laughs> I even put a shirt over my night light so that, you know, mom wouldn't see that I had light going on in my room and play uh, yeah. Nemesis like all night long, only to burn a hole into my shirt because I was the, the light got too hot and started melting on it. So, yeah, I the Game Boy was pretty damn cool. Yeah, I, I would definitely say Game Boy, in terms of length of time used, like, hands down, I went through so many batteries back then. Yeah. Because we're all, again, re- reminding yeah. people, we're all yeah. basically the exact same age. Toby's, like, a yeah. year younger yeah. than me, me, Brock, and Charlie, but we're all the same age. Yeah. So the Game Boy would have hit, like, at a perfect age yeah. for us. We were, like, yeah. 10 years old. And I even, I even remember, because, like... Um, at Christmas time, we would always go to my grandmother's and she had this thing like Christmas Eve, you could pick one present from like under the tree to open. And of course, because I was hoping to get the Game Boy, I looked at all the boxes being like, this looks like the right size box. Yep. My story was I opened the game first and I went, why would you give me <laughs> a Game Boy game? I don't have a Game Boy. And my parents were like, why don't you keep opening your presents? Get it right away. <laughs> <laughs> no, my I I um my dad worked a lot in Japan, so I actually they, he gave me the. Did you work at Nintendo? No, no. I mean, he gave me the um the Japanese Game Boy, which didn't come with Tetris. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else was playing Tetris together. I actually didn't have Tetris, so it's kind of uh, interesting. But I did get Ninja Turtles cool. right off the bat, so I I, I say that's a win. Okay, I'm going to do like Nintendo. three more from Alex. Oh, go ahead. Nintendo was also around the, that time, too. Just the yeah, regular yeah. NES. That might have oh, been yeah. that might have been mine. I don't think I got my NES for Christmas. I think I feel like I got it for like a... Like a, we got it as like a family gift. Like, it wasn't for me. Like, I, I kind of remember the NES coming as just like, we all got it. Well, I, I had to make a choice. It was NES or Game Boy. And I was like, I'll get away with playing the Game Boy a lot more. Instead. NES was years before Game Boy. Yeah, yeah. but they, they were, I mean, I, I always went to my neighbor's ki- uh, neighbor's house to play it. Oh, okay, it okay. The hill, but I never never got an NES. So yeah. Question from Alex. He says, "Why do I get? Uh, feel, why do I feel like I'm shouting into the void whenever I try to talk to people about Klaus? It's written by uh, Graham Morrison and the arts by Dan Moore, who's basically doing everything now. It's a." Uh, the Grant Morrison Klaus. It's a comic book. <laughs> there is an animated series, series or movie. Uh, it's a series and Christmas tradition that doesn't get any respect. What gives? I kind of poked around at the first issue and I was like, no. Yeah. I just, yeah, it just didn't, nothing did it for me. A couple of those Grant Morrison tell. things that I just like, I read like the first issue and I was like, nah, like. They did like the, dude, let's go. Was there a mini series and now it's now it's just like a graphic novel every year? I think, Is that so. what I think that sounds about right. Yeah. Sorry, when you say Klaus, I just think of the guy in Umbrella Academy who is completely awesome and Klaus. Uh, Klaus. Yeah, I mean it's Claus. I guess would, would be the way to say it, like Santa Claus, but K K L A U S. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm gonna give, give it another shot. Um, we don't sell hardly any. I get like one order for it. I like nobody buys it. It. I don't know. I don't know why. I do not know why. It's just one of those books that just doesn't really click. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. Is it because you leave it at the bottom shelf and only have one copy? No, at this point, I don't even get them. I mean, I think this year was just a graphic novel. I had one customer order. I ordered it for that customer, and that's it. So, S. Beeman asks, uh, any items uh, or, or items like hot toys and statues, are they money makers for store? for stores and does anyone in the group collect hot toys uh they can be if you sell a lot of them yeah. the margin is horrible on hot toys and statues yeah. like we'll get i don't do like sideshow statues at all at the store um we get statues pretty regularly but only select ones they kind of have to be the the higher discount more traditional marvel and dc ones i don't we don't get too many um hot toys the markup is tiny Mm -hmm. so unless you are selling them way over retail uh the markup is not a money maker uh 
I would love to collect hot toys. I have resisted so far. They're amazing. And I ha- we have a couple customers that buy them from me and I do sell them just, you know, just basically at, I mean, my almost at cost. Um, I have one of my guys that has like 80 Iron Man. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Uh, they're amazing, but no, I, 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 I stay away. I stay away. Anyone else? Toby, you got a couple, don't you? Yeah. I, you I have to- like them. Um, I made the mistake of not opening them right away and putting them out and also made the mistake of looking them up of how much they're worth. <laughs> yeah, it's still a yeah. lot harder to just open them up at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wish I would have bought more than one back then, but they're not cheap. As you mentioned, um, they're just more expensive now. Yeah. Yeah. The ones are coming in at like four, almost you now three fifty. I, I looked up. I, ha, I have the 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 Baron Farrell, uh Punisher, and man, that guy goes for money right now. And I'm like, shit. But I really like it. I mean, that the whole point was I really like these. That's why I picked them up. And I was trying to be really picky and choosy about it, just because of the price point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, I got you know just my favorites. Like I got some of the Netflix guys. I wish they did a Jessica Jones, but you know I got Daredevil and Punisher. Uh, and I I thought the Wonder Woman one looked amazing, so I grabbed that one. I got Alita. So my 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 collection of hot toys is very bizarre because it's literally I would only go for my absolute favorites. Um, and uh, and and yeah, uh, they're fun. It's just they're, man, they're not cheap. So yeah. It is crazy, though, like just how many of them, like almost every single one becomes worth more uh, than what you pay in the long run. But you've got to you've got to, you know, you've got to stick with it. Right. And and if you lose on a few, if there's a couple that maybe don't quite click. And if you lose on a few, like you could lose some money if you're talking about trying to flip. them. Yeah, so. like I, I, I think I tried to get the, the, the Guardian Skitter and I missed on a couple of them. And now I'm like, I might be better off just selling the ones I have or just <laughs> complete the set because it's just insane. So, Jesus. yeah, and yeah, you have to get them early to like we have to pre-order i mean they're hard to, i mean yeah i mean i i pre-ordered them. i mean all, all my hot toys are through you ryan i think i yeah. don't even have any uh, what i call used ones that i bought you know from other people that were displayed or anything like that but i think all of mine are brand new from you and and um yeah they're not they're not cheap and i yeah i pre-ordered them like i think alita what, took a year to come in Oh, they oh easy. They're yeah. all they're like, all huge. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I got eighteen uh, months. I really yeah, like, um, I I wish I got Gamora. Um, I would actually probably trade all my Guardians in to get a Gamora, or 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 I I want to keep, <laughs> want to keep Groot. Uh, but no, I was I was hoping for um the Valkyrie to get one, but that never happened. Or or Domino, so I had to settle for Marvel Legends on those. Um, yeah. No, I, I, look, I got my favorites. I, I, I'm good. Like, I got my Punisher. I got my Daredevil. I, I mean, like, like I said, if they did a Jessica Jones, that would have been killer. But, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm fairly, I'm fairly happy. Like, I'm trying to distance myself to wanting more, just because I, I need to do a fat perch this uh, winter break. Uh, but, but yeah, no, they're, they're fun. But uh, yeah, I definitely have to be picking and choosing. They're, they're, they're way too expensive. There's way too many. Of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the yeah. Thing. Look, I, I, I say this though. If that's the only thing you collect, right? Totally cool. Um, because then but you cool. could still be in. You could still be in three hundred bucks a month just on hot toys. It's still like just one bigger. easy one a month. Really? Oh, more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well then I'm wrong. Like, well, <laughs> I'm not paying attention to it anymore, and I'll probably will regret it like six months from now. Go wait, which figure came out? That's already yeah. out, already gone. Uh, but no, I mean, yeah. I like every. They are incredible. They are amazing. Yeah. I got, I got one. Harley Quinn Suicide Squad movie. The regular yeah. one is like five hundred and fifty dollars on eBay. I have the one that has the the pre order hammer. So I'm like, I don't even know how much that one goes for. I'm just happy they stick with movie stuff because I can completely ignore those. I mean, I love the movies, yeah. but I just have no interest in collecting movie stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, it's just easy for me to ignore. Final question before we get out of here. We have a bunch. Sorry we couldn't get to everyone's. There's a lot of questions. But we need to do some of these. In the Atomic General asks, why isn't there more Donny Cates love on the podcast? It's a good question. Why do we not Why no more, not more Donny Cates? What are you talking about? I love Redneck. Yeah, you brought you read some of his indie stuff. Crossover's been great. 
Yeah, I need to catch up. I've only read the first two so far. Oh, no, that's all that's been out. Yeah, three's not out three's yet. Not out yet. Oh, three's okay. the one everyone's going, oh, my God, it's got a spawn cover. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, whatever, whatever. We'll see. <laughs> um, at least for his Marvel stuff, uh, we'll, we'll kind of come from the, the, the earlier stuff. Uh, Thanos is cool. Uh, I hate Cosmic Ghost Rider. I fucking hate Cosmic Ghost Rider a ton. He's just super annoying. I actually but had a normal friend hit me up the other day. So he goes, hey, what's up, man? I'm like, uh, all right. It's going on you. He goes, all right. I was like, where the fuck is this going? And he goes, so um, Punisher's in space now? And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, what's this Ghost Rider thing and, and, and space? I'm like, where the fuck are you getting this from? And he, I guess he's playing some kind of uh, phone game. <laughs> he was like, yeah, man. No, he's, an angel. he's an angel now. He's an angel. Like like what in the Marvel Knights one, but expanded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, spoilers for Donny Cates Thanos stuff. Cosmic Ghost Rider is a future version of Frank Castle, who is killed and becomes Ghost Rider for the Spirit space, of Vengeance. Space Ghost Rider. Look, but that's yeah. nothing to do with the Marvel Knights Angel stuff, though, right? No, 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 no. Um. I just hate it. I just hate the concept from start to finish. I, I'm never the huge, hugest Punisher fan, but I hate when they put Punisher into the Marvel universe stuff like that. Punisher should not be going around hunting. What the hell was he? They, they just had him hunting, uh, like all the the um, like the uh, coming out of Thor, uh, out of the War of Realms stuff. He was hunting like trolls. It's like, no, no, get that shit out of here. No, Punisher kills like Russians. Didn't Savage like, Conan awesome. go up against Punisher? So, get, no, get Punisher, get Punisher the fuck out of there. I have no interest in that. So I like Cosmic Ghost Rider, but I like Cosmic Ghost Rider when he's bound to that future Thanos world. Like, I, I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of how much they spun off the character directly after that. Yeah. But I liked the idea of the Ghost Rider in the future was Frank Castle. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, Gar- Guardians was fine, but it was so short. Like, nothing came of that. Like, it was a super short run. Like, it was fine. Um, obviously, the big one is Venom. I really don't i'm not a venom fan so i've read the first uh, maybe 12 <laughs> issues of it i'll catch up eventually like it's in my giant backlog of stuff to read uh but the like, venom carnage i i don't mind them but like solo venom stuff is not, i'm not at all interested in um i am interested in his thor run i actually i caught up with the jason aaron stuff i i i burned through all the end of that and and war of realms and and i'm just reading other stuff so i just haven't started reading his thor run yet uh so yeah i mean venom and thor are gonna be your big two books by him and 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 i just haven't read enough venom and i haven't started thor so i don't have a lot to say about those runs so I'll but I, what ryan just said i there's there just haven't been books that he wrote that I've been interested in, but I've been interested in him ever since we were at Comic-Con watching the retailers panel, and he was one of the most enthusiastic guys on the panel. Like, remember yeah. that? that was like, like, he was the one that showed up for Marvel, and he had a lot of energy, and I'm like, I really like this dude, so... Yeah, no, I... I, I, I... I have nothing against him. Like on a, I mean, we follow each other on Twitter. He's a nice enough guy. We've not like talk talk, but I mean, we've you know like Twitter talk, uh, a couple comments here and there, and I've I've liked some. Of, I like this Thanos run quite a bit. Like Cosmic Ghost Rider is just like this thing that I'm just like, no, I have no interest in Cosmic Ghost Rider. Sorry, um, but uh, uh, I do. Uh, this is Thor run. The 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 problem with Donny Cates is his fans or let me rephrase this the people that like the books he works on and i like like obviously if you don't follow him you don't see any of this stuff but the interaction like the people that like him are the worst fucking people (laughs) because they're it's a lot of speculators it's a lot of like hardcore ass venom fans it's 
they're really bad. The people he has to deal with on a daily basis on social media, and he replies to fucking everyone. It's not, it's, I, it's so frustrating and so annoying. That's not, that's not him. Right. Mm -hmm. But the people, his books bring in are an odd, odd group of people. And, that I'm saying that's not I'm not saying that turns me off on his books, but yeah, the stuff he's working on is just I'm, fuck. He leaves Marvel and they throw him on a D, on a Batman book. You know him there day one, right? Um, I his style. I like. I can't. I can't see him like on Avengers or Spider Man. Like his style just doesn't really lend itself to to that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like he, he's, he's, he reminds me a little bit of Scott Snyder, I think. And he's kind of got his very specific character types that he deals with. And he works well with the darker uh, characters. Yeah. Like, like yeah. The, the, the anti-heroes or the villains. More. Yeah. And, and like, like Snyder's justice league was, was interesting, but it's not really a traditional justice league title. Yeah. It was very much this other thing. I liked it, yeah. but it wasn't like a traditional mm-hmm. big seven justice league book, but it worked for what he was trying to do. I could see maybe if Kate's did like savage Avengers or something, or, or like a, like a new take on new Avengers with like the, the more, you know, with Wolverine and and and, and Luke Cage and, mm-hmm. and those characters, like that might work. He, that might, he, but that, he, I, he would be good as the uh, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Gray Hulk, Fantastic yeah, yeah, Four, right? Sure. Oh, that would be perfect for him. Yeah, I can't see him writing like normal FF or Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, something about the characters he writes, he's real more suited to those. But I like those characters. Oh, yeah. oh you know what? No, his Ghost Rider was good. Or not Ghost Rider. His Doctor Strange was good. I liked his Doctor Strange run quite quite a bit. Yeah, uh, he also did are, God Country, which I've heard good reviews about, but I've never read it. Yeah, I, I've only I haven't done too much of his indie work. Crossover will probably be the first one I follow regularly. Crossover is really good. I like Redneck. Cool. Yeah, Redneck got like way off schedule, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's been on a weird schedule, but I like it. It's good. It, I mean, it's very, it's very hick American vampire. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, like it, it, you, if if he came over to uh, if he came over to uh, DC, I'd be like, ooh, who would he do well with, right? Yeah, I could see him maybe on Daredevil if they gave him Daredevil. I could see that. Daredevil, yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's got characters they're, that they're, they're just going to give. Him, he's just going to do a Moon Knight series. I think he'd be perfect on Moon Knight. But he. Who did? Oh no, that was someone else. That wasn't Donny Cates. He didn't do that last Moon Knight run. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there you go. That's some questions. What a podcast! We are done for tonight. But before we go, I just want to say, uh, we celebrate Christmas. Merry Christmas! Um, if you don't, happy f- couple days off. Uh, that's always fun. And uh, we're going to be back next week with a probably mostly full cast. Talking about Wonder Woman 84, assuming it finally, finally, actually releases. We'll see if it, uh, if it actually happens. I'm, 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 I'm confident I'm, it will. I'm probably going to have seen it twice. Yeah. Why do you not think it's going to happen? Because the movie's like a year and a half late. It's 2020. <laughs> it's, okay. Okay. it's 2020. Yeah. You have to expect the worst. Yeah. It's still yeah. 2020. No, Charlie, what's going to happen is... Ryan is going to get ready to watch it, and the power is going to go out. Yeah. <laughs> my, my power okay, is going to go out. so why Ryan may not be able to watch it, that's okay. We're fine. As long as I'm able to watch it. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah. It's, Someone at HBO Max is going to go, play. Oh, shit, I hit delete. Fuck. Oh, we just lost the entire movie. Oops. Sorry. Deleted the whole thing. It's all gone. Uh, no backups. Sorry, we have to reshoot the whole movie from scratch. Seeing no, they're, they're like the only copy we have is a 480p. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so hopefully, none of this happens, and we are back in here uh, next week talking about Wonder Woman. And then we're going to get a nice group of people. I've already talked to most of the other guys uh, on the fifth. We're going to have a nice little roundup with everyone talking about kind of the year 
we're not going to do our traditional end of year episode because this is not year, right but, the year. and we just the, the the list of stuff we have may not be quite the right things to talk about and you know uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna ramble we're gonna talk maybe something important happens i don't know we make it i think metal metal's on the fifth so we'll um hopefully we uh we can maybe talk a little bit about that but uh yeah I'm, we're bringing in um uh, Lane and and Jim and Scott now and, and uh, uh, I still got to hear back from Bryce, but he it sounded like he was fine to record. So we're gonna not all at the same time. We can't have like nine people in this podcast at once. I that would not. But we can that have nineteen work. people on the podcast. That would not work. But we're gonna I'm gonna get them in and and do some recording with some people and just uh, yeah just shit shit. We're gonna zoom. Uh, we're gonna zoom the shit out of this thing. Bring out this new year. Thank you to all our Patreon backers. Patreon.com slash Comic Conspiracy. Joe Duff. Jesse Peterson at the Comic Book Matters podcast. Jimmy Rivera at the Social Forum podcast. Andrew Nelson Mendez at Recovery of an Anime Junkie podcast. Please go check out all those podcasts that some of our uh, listeners do, as well as Craig Anderson and his website, clearpathcoaches.com. If uh, if you are a professional and you want to learn how to be the best you can possibly be, Craig Anderson is the one to help you out. As well as Mario Miranda. He's got a YouTube channel called The Comic Lounge dedicated to talking about comic books and interviewing creators. Go check out his YouTube channel. Please head over to geekbox.net, comicspiracypodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify for all our previous episodes. Uh, sorry, too late to shop for Christmas, but uh, comicsconspiracy.biz is where you can buy all your uh, all your. Uh, comics and graphic novels and toys and trades directly from us and uh, you can you know you can always do it tonight or tomorrow and do an in-store pickup conspiratorbrock.com that's Brock's blog video pulls and unboxing videos wanders in the fourth dimension that's Charlie's Doctor Who podcast and new episodes soon next week cannot wait and uh, between the panel a new episode of Doctor Who I mean I'm always excited for the newest episode of wanders in the fourth dimension but I'm Excited for the new episode of Doctor Who that's coming up next week. Have you even listened to a Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension episode? I have. I absolutely have. Not recently. <laughs> they are more hardcore than I am. <laughs> you must be a specific fan to be to be into Wanderers, but but the the research that the those guys do is more than what episode number is this? 480 episodes of research that we have done for the podcast, okay? For one episode. What's that? For, for one, one episode. For, for one episode. Yeah. For one episode. They put more work into one episode than we have for 480 pieces of shit that we've done, okay? I've, I've, you must listen to them. Joined them Turn this off. Theirs. I joined them on one of theirs, and I think we were, like, for an hour and a half, they were just prepping for the episode, <laughs> writing notes the Google Doc, where they had color-coordinated... Uh, text to go to you know whoever is in charge of whatever section. I was like, holy shit! I can't even guess get the guests of the sorry the host of this podcast to say their actual name yeah. when we start the episode. Let's okay, on there. that's a much of a that's a much of a horse and pony show. This thing is okay. Dog and pony show. What's a horse and pony? Show? <laughs> Dog and pony show. Dog and pony show. Horse and pony. Something totally different. Um. I don't know what the Sharp. person pony thing is. Uh, Kevin Sharp has Between the Panels, a fanbasepress.com weekly interview series. And uh, Leanne, uh, my wife, has leannehill.com. Or you can go purchase her prints on etsy.com slash shop slash leannehillart for all her artwork. And she just finished a new print, uh, continuing a series of Haunted Mansion changing portrait mm-hmm. prints. Uh, so uh, I will one. say this. Oh. Yesterday, I sold like four of her prints. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, we always sell a bunch of Christmas. I sold, I sold a couple today, too. So, uh, If you are on Twitter, you should follow Ryan Higgins. Ryan, that is myself, Brock. One of these days, Ryan Brock Sager is coming back. Yeah, Keep a bookmark. Toby XI is Toby. Charlie's Sanity and Chaos. The store is ComicsCon store. Please uh, please give us a follow. Uh, if you listen to the Geek Box. I'm on that every week. This past week, we talked about Mando season two, full spoilers. And uh, Greg Ford was on. We also talked about, uh, me and him talked about uh, season four of Fargo, uh, which just wrapped up. So we, we talked a little bit about Fargo as well, one of my favorite shows. So, Let's talk about anything else. 
So we're talking about Cyberpunk next week. So since you're talking, since you brought up Game Boy earlier and you brought up Geek Box, I, I was curious as if you guys have addressed this yet. That when we were kids, we got the Game Boy, and it was all about the kids getting the Game Boy. Yeah. The, I don't know if kids are ever going to enjoy getting anything again if consoles are just bought by asshole men. <laughs> yeah, you can pay twelve hundred bucks for it on uh, pay twelve hundred bucks for it on eBay, and then you can then you can get your kid their stupid PS Five. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're in a very different. Uh, in a very different world now, speculators would have ruined every Christmas. I mean, they kind of always did, but now it's really bad. Well, they always did, but like back then, it was harder to resell a Game Boy than it is yeah. today, where it's like add up in the papers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I meet someone in a parking lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Now it's you Venmo and um, get a jersey number. What's that? And now it's you Venmo and getting tra- uh, get a tracking number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we also have our friends over at Mango Monkey Nations. Please give those guys a follow. That's all we got. All right, thank you, everyone. We'll uh, we'll be back next week for a new episode of the podcast. We'll see you then. Mm-hmm.